Thanks for clicking the video. We've got a special message at the end for you if you wouldn't mind sticking around for it. Also, it's totally free to like the video and share it with a friend, which would be so super helpful. Thanks. A funny story that's related to this song. Um, my sister recently got engaged, so congrats to her. And she's getting married at the end of the summer, and I have to sing at her wedding. I don't have to, I get to. I get to sing at her wedding. I am her man of honor, so I get to stand there uh, as her, you know, brother, her one brother. And um gonna eat something. Yeah, eating's good. <laughs> and um no, I she asked me to sing this song that Lara Lara is going to be singing. How am I? Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm excited about this song, Caruso. It's like a, an awesome song. Uh, and it's requested by our one and only Capriani. You've seen his name up here. Um, let's continue our Lara Fabian journey. It's time, uh, at this time with a song you'll probably know by Pavarotti or Bocelli. You know, very famous uh, operatic song. Song sung by many operatic singers. Caruso, about the famous Enrico Caruso who was actually the first operatic recording artist. Good, Nati. Go to the gym after that. It'll help. Um, Enrico Caruso was one of the first operatic recording artists, one of the first, like, all-stars. And he made tons and tons of recordings. Sometimes they would just have him in a hotel room with a piano and he would be recording there. He's an absolute legend. Um in the recording. If you listen to his old recordings, they sound like pee pee poo poo. They're like old, crusty, like they don't sound good. They were literally done on like the wax cylinders in the early 20th century. But the um actual prowess of him as a singer, he could sing anything. He sang everything. He was a smoker. I read the story once where he every night before he went to the Metropolitan Opera to perform he would do this like cleansing ritual where he would like boil water, inhale the steam in the kitchen and then just cough up all of the phlegm from all the cigarettes he smoked until the phlegm went from black, which it would be from smoking to clear. And then once it was clear, he's like, all right, the voice is clean. I can go sing now. Uh, and this guy could literally just sing anything. He filled the house. People would go crazy over him. If you're really interested in an awesome history of what it meant to like be an opera singer, opera star in the early 20th century, look up Enrico Caruso. This song was written about him. Um, it was made very pa famous by Pavarotti. Um, and he, he, I think he premiered it. I don't really remember though. But in this case, we get to listen to the beautiful and lovely, talented Laura Fabian performing Caruso. I picked this version because it has English subtitles. My guess is that most people in the stream are at least a bit rusty when it comes to Italian. Cheers. I love it. Let's do this. Lucio Dalla. He's the composer. By who? No one. Oh, the new citizen. Go subscribe. Qui dove il mare luccica e dove tira forte il vento su una vecchia terrazza davanti al golfo di Sorrento un uomo abbraccia una ragazza Dopo che aveva pianto, poi si schiarisce la voce e ricomincia il canto. Te voglio bene, sai, ma tanto, ma tanto bene.
She's one of the most sensitive and like attentive artists with the voice. Cause I have this song drilled into my head as being sung by like tenors and opera singers and that riff in the chorus. Da, 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 da. It's always like a flex moment. Da, 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 da. Right, it's when you rip it out, right? But and it and that's how these tenors and people who sing the song have typically you know drawn emotion out but attention to detail and attention to text and attention to story is something that Raha has already done so many times over and has always done really effectively and the way that she approaches this chorus in the first time yeah I mean the attention to the entire arc of the story as a song the attention to the specific words that she's singing that's like where she's taken the song that's been done by so many her famous opera singers so many men so many people and taking it to the next level and making it personal and making it unique in a way that can't be replicated is the way she's approaching this chorus and feeling and making every word meaningful. In these moments where that phrase is usually like a big profession of love and big and loud and passionate, she recontextualizes it totally and turns that profession of love into like a painful moment. Now this is the chorus, it repeats itself many times, so I'm sure it will, she'll give us a different type of delivery as the song continues. But it's a really bold and interesting choice to take such a big statement and make it such a small proclamation. It also implies hesitation. We feel that because telling someone you love them very much is a really vulnerable thing. And it's not often that we all just let it out and big. Um, it helps that she's fluent in Italian. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> totally. Um, and, and studying language is equally as important when you're singing in different languages and understanding the words as you're doing it so specifically too. And the way that she, she really viscerally emotes the, the idea of the blood and everything that's happening. Um, it just shows how connected she is to the story. All right, let's, let's keep going. I'm super impressed by this though. So far. Hey. Yes. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, I mean, the delivery of the song, I've never felt it in this way. She does the opposite of what she does in the beginning, dramatically at least. Uh, so cleanly, too. She, the story, it tells a story of Caruso reflecting on his whole life and career and, and like the passion that went into it and the sacrifices that were made and sort of the, the unwieldy nature. He was a guy who was known for like making a lot of practical do jokes, but also really kind of su suffering to his own vices. This is at a time when celebrity, he was also one of the first like musical celebrities ever, at least in the 20th century. And he really suffered because of that. Uh, we, we've associated a lot of psychological phenomena, uh, negative psychological unwellness to celebrity mentality. And he, there was no infrastructure for him to cope with that. And so the story she's telling is that of love, but also coping and loss of a life that used to be and he couldn't sing anymore and, and, and reflecting on that. It's very, very heavy and passionate. And she's creating vocally this environment where there's a constant ebb of flow of the desire to give and be honest, but also the pain that it is. And so we want to hold back from admitting that that pain is real. And she, she sings pain really well. Usually something like anger, for example, is not a really easy thing to sing about. And pain is, is also just as difficult. And she is giving us this story of the desire to hold back true pain, letting it stay bottled up, and then being unable to stop anymore. di trucco e con la mimica sai poi puoi anche diventare un altro così così diventa tutto piccolo anche le soli notti là in America ti porti e vedi la tua vita come la scia di un hold up we'll listen to the whole note and we'll enjoy this but one really fascinating thing she's doing. She goes from conversational into more of a chesty belt into a really seamless floated head voice note that is sustained all on one breath. She doesn't, well, maybe it's one breath, but it, all in the same phrase, at least it's a very seamless transmission that that's just super impressive and rare. I can't, I can't imagine that being something that is like easy to do, but in fact, it's not. It's it's a really it 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 goes to the point that she is like one of the most intentional and diligent singers in knowing exactly what she's doing in every performance, to the word, to the phrase. Like this is a testament to that, and she it helps her tell the story more effectively. I'll go back. We listen to that stanza again and go into the last chorus or second to last chorus. <laughs> All on one breath. That, that was it.
More than anything, the way that she's creating sound is vulnerable. Like vulnerability and performance, no matter what you're doing, is the most important thing. The sound she creates is so good. She's so like refined as a singer that her technique is just raw voice. It's barely like you can barely call it singing, not in a bad way, but it it's just like the epitome of phonation. It's so raw. It's so not inhibited by any like stylism. Like it's hard to it's hard to pin her down as a styled singer. There's no like specific style that I can say she is. She's just like a raw vocalist. And that's that aspect of her storytelling that you can't quantify so much because it's the quality of the voice that she's created over years and years of training and diligence and artistic intention that is uninhibited by any technical fault. There's no technical fault getting in the way of what she's doing. She's really just like literally belting it out, belting the words in a completely vulnerable way that make us believe this story more. I forgot that it was about a an old opera singer dude and I really just felt like it was about her because of how raw her vocal production is. That straight tone she's creating, it's not straight tone from breathiness. It's not straight tone from holding back. It's straight tone from compressing the voice in such a way with so much breath flow that the voice is forced to just phonate in one pitch. And what's crazy about that is sometimes you even get overtones that make us hear like a fifth above of what she's singing for just a split second. And in when we did poor song uh, with her and Henry, I think it was Henry. This is his name. Um, the other French singer. Um, we, she was actually switching pitches th through the resonance itself. And that's, that's, that's her technique just working in a really amazing way in a natural relaxed way because the human voice is built for that there's no such thing as a human voice that is uh well there is there's probably people with with different issues and different things that happened uh when i don't know whatever everyone's different but the human voice at its epitome when it's trained well and refined to the point that she does again olympic level singing it's possible to actually create huge like dips in uh, sorry huge leaps in overtones that are so powerful that it it actually tricks your ear into hearing the fifth instead of the fundamental the dominant instead of the fundamental of the pitch uh, which is part of the overtone series that naturally occurs in the voice they don't call her the ring for nothing yeah you hear such a strong clear stardent ring in her tone when she's singing full out and what's awesome is that it just is so gassed from where she started out. So she takes you on this huge timbral and dramatic journey by how much she is able to pull back at the front and give us at the end like no one else can. Let's do it here. <laughs> If you listen closely, and the audio, like as Caprani said, the, the audio is not the best. Oh, he said it in his message. I didn't say it. The video quality, the audio is not bad. The video quality is bad. And the audio quality is, you can hear literally the fifth above the pitch. It's so clear. It's mastered in a way where the voice is so clear that that you can literally hear the fifth above it. I'll try to like hum it at the same time if in case you can't, but it's, it's profound.
Where are we? That's the overtone pitch. You literally will hear that pitch because of how optimized her technique is. Because she's singing in such, with max support and max timbral resonance that the overtone series is so clear. It's just super impressive. I mean, that happens in all of her long, big sustained notes. All right, let's enjoy the rest. Oh, it is cool. Good job, Charles. Amazing playing. Thank you. So, hey there. I hope you enjoyed checking out our coach analysis and reactions today. Your support really does mean so much. We've been posting content here on YouTube for almost a year now, and the growth of this channel would not be possible without music lovers and singers like yourself. Now, if you haven't already, it would be awesome to see you in our Discord server, discord.gg slash bigbrainsinger where you can hang out with and chat with other like-minded music enthusiasts. With all the growth we've seen in recent months, we have started planning a ton of really big community projects coming up. And we're actually looking for passionate individuals to help us work on social media marketing and video editing. If you have any interest in helping the community and those are some things you're interested in specifically, I'd love to hear from you. You can either find me on Discord or email me at charlie at bigbrainsinger.com. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.